In the pantheon of rock operas, Tommy, The Wall, and Jesus Christ Superstar come to mind first on the list of classic titles, but could we someday add to that list Happy Land? We want to welcome you to Happy Land. I'm Matt Pikin, and today on The Overlook, we meet Zach Knox and Braden Dickerson, the Asheville creators of Happy Land, an original ensemble cast musical premiering this month at the Magnetic Theater. We were like, how do we do something that's different? How do we as a band step away from the conventional structure of what bands do? They just make music and then try to follow up with touring. You know, how do we do something outside of that that's different? Zach and Braden are the founding members of the band Smooth Goose. Some of their originals became the seeds of Happy Land. We'll talk with Zach and Braden about the theatrical nature of their band, the creative evolution of the Happy Land music, and how this project is influencing the band's direction. Asheville is a high demand housing market, everyone knows that, so you want someone on your side like Jennifer Goodier of Davidia Realty. As competition has tightened for everyone shopping for homes, Jennifer has some strategies to help give you an edge. There's a few things that can happen to alleviate a higher mortgage payment. One of them is to use seller paid closing costs to buy down points on your mortgage. Now, you were telling me that people shouldn't worry so much about competing against all cash offers. Why is that? Investors aren't looking in the same price range as a lot of home buyers. You know, if they have cash, they're looking at prices under 300000 A lot of them can't make the numbers work at a $500,000 house, especially with this interest rate. In this competitive home buying market, reach out to Jennifer at Davidia Realty to help give you the edge. Go to Davidia Realty, that's D I V I T I A Realty.com. I began my conversation with Zach and Braden about the beginnings of their collaboration. The first voice we hear is Braden's. From the birth of what we do, it was mostly original, and then we've always thrown in covers we love. But right off the bat, I was trying to develop music with Zach and show him what what I was working on and have him throw in his two cents. And then that's turned over time into us working on a lot of songs together as a as, you know, kind of 50 50 from both sides. Before this theater opportunity, where would we hear you playing? Mostly locally. There's been a few gigs here and there where we venture outside. But for the most part, we've been a local band for the five and six years that we've been together. Yeah, yeah. One Stop, One World West, Boo Gym have been real good to us for sure. Straight Away Cafe. One Stop. I think you did you say that? I did. But you yeah. said yeah. it twice. Hey, we love the One Stop, we though. We love the One Stop. <laughs> have you guys made a record of your own music? We've recorded a lot. We haven't released anything yet. It's really easy to get the stuff recorded, getting it finished and mastered and out there has been not been our strong seat. It's a whole nother hump, you know, it's a whole nother hump that we're getting on right now. So that's, that's the fun part. So talk about the very genesis of Happy Land. Had either of you written or been part of uh, creating musical theater before? I haven't done anything really theatrical. You know, I, I had a lot of band stuff in, in school, and but nothing specifically theatrical. I've uh, never created or like written anything for music theater before, but I've been the accompanist or band leader for Grease and plenty of Disney stuff, Joseph and the, Ma- and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. I've done a, a few other ones I'm probably forgetting, but just as like the piano player, I've never had this much creative liberty before in a, oh, well, Algorithm and Blues, that's true, the Magnetic Theater, that's true. That was a, yeah, like a sketch comedy thing. I did a couple songs for that. You created uh, some original music for Algorithm and Blues? Pretty original. More if Weird Al is original than yes, like spoof versions of of popular songs, but yeah. So talk about, again, the seed of, hey, let's write our own piece of musical theater. I would think in some ways that'd be such a pivot away from your own original music that you were working on. How did this even come up as as a topic? There was a few songs that we'd written together that were original songs that we felt had a storyline starting to weave through them. For some reason, they felt grouped together over other original songs that we'd written. And it was that small idea of like, hey, I think there's a little something more in these two or three songs we've written that we need to develop on. Talk about that theme. What was that theme that you saw? 
in those songs. It's had different structures and narratives as, as we've developed it, obviously, because we've had to figure out what it is song per song. Each song we've written around, it's defined it a little bit more. We wrote this one song, which is called Happy Land, and we didn't write it in mind of it being the opening title or some big, you know, big theme song for this. But we wrote it, I guess, as just like, let's write a ridiculous, fun, cartoon-like, childlike song that people can get loose to and feel happy to that has no real meaning or anything else. But then there were other songs that developed sort of a love story almost. Essentially a love story with some trials, tribulations, and then this great big ending kind of started to develop. I guess a love story was, was part of it. Am I the only one? It sounds like you were just writing songs and you noticed these threads. You weren't thinking of them, hey, this is musical theater material, right? You just saw these threads. And I'm wondering who was the first to think, hey, these aren't just songs meant for a club. We can make theater out of this. How did that happen? Happy Land, the theme song was like the one that brought them together in like a concept album or for a rock opera or for a musical, right? We were trying to figure out what our next project was. We had recorded a record, all the COVID stuff started happening and it kind of shut everybody down, obviously. And so we were sitting on a record, which we're still sitting on, we already recorded. And we were like, how do we do something that's different? How do we as a band step away from the conventional structure of what bands do? They just make music and then try to follow up with touring. You know, how do we do something outside of that? that's different, that, that simple. And I think his, you know, theater back, background with Jamie and everything else kind of, and my influence in the, the stuff he'd showed me from Harry Nilsson, it was this weird thing that culminated out of these few things that he'd shared with me and we were listening to at the time. And it seems like it led us to write that one song, which connected those other four or five songs we're talking about that were already kind of developing a, weaving a storyline. Once you decided there was a theatrical umbrella to these songs, they had to be reshaped in a way. You know, these songs sound like theater. They don't sound at all like something you would have as a band on stage. Maybe it's because of the choral aspect to it, you know, the ensemble vocal part. I can't even fathom yet how you would have a front man singing this material. So talk about once you decided that this way of presenting them that theater would be the way to do it. How did you then steer the songs or sculpt the songs in a way that would work for theater and are not necessarily something you would get up on stage with a four or five piece, you know, pop rock band to do? Well, that's been an interesting part of this process is I'd say like half of these songs we perform live and then putting them in into this format has been like interesting because sometimes we'll do four bars of a vamp and then sometimes we'll take a guitar solo and you know, that's not usually what like performers want to hear. They're like, no, 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 like tell me what to do. Like I need to know what to, what to sing right here. And so that has been interesting because we haven't written out an entire score or anything for this. We have a, like a script but you know, they don't have notes to read and all that kind of stuff. So that's been a very strange part of this. Once you decided that theater was gonna be how you presented these songs, how did the songs change? Because like I said, these sound like musical theater pieces. They don't sound like band songs. Right. So was there a change or did you just say, hey, you know what we did with a lead singer, we can do the same songs, but with an ensemble. Well, I would say Smooth Goose, we are, kind of a theatrical kind of band already. Like, we don't try to put on any airs. We like to be silly. We run skits on stage. Like, we'll just decide that our drummer's in the witness protection program, and we won't tell anyone his name. Like, last time we wore, like, puffy vests and bucket hats, all of us, just because it was time to be a 90s hip-hop cover band, even though we're not going to play any 90s hip-hop cover material. I think we step on stage in a theatrical way that none of us have any desire to take ourselves too seriously. Nobody knows who we are, right, in the grand scheme yet. And, and so we try to step on stage like, we are nobody. I'm gonna ride, ride that road. I'm gonna ride, ride that we 
can roar. I'm headed for the sadness, but I'm not a sad man anymore. Most of these songs were developed just as a rock band, so a lot of that's been done through working with the Magnetic Theater, and they're really good at kind of breaking songs down into like, well, this is where we're going to go visually with people, right, with choreography. We've done a good bit of taking out certain lyrics, changing lyrical rhythmic patterns so that they're, they make more sense for a group, for a choir to sing, for protagonists to sing. So the music has changed, but it's changed very slightly from its original place. So if you were to go see a Smooth Goose show and you will definitely catch us playing all kinds of songs from Happy Land, they are going to have more of this you know, country funk rock feel when we're playing them as opposed to we really have catered to the the theater side uh, working with Magnetic Theater and, you know, made it much more theatrical. But as a band, when we are theatrical and we step on stage, it's we could be anybody. We could be nobody. We could be sailors. We could be soldiers. We could be uh, a number of things. You know, we just we just try to always think of a different thing to be every time we step on stage. Do you decide with every gig that you have that there's going to be a different personality, a different costuming or backstory to your band? Yeah, backstory for sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll always have some sort of game plan for some banter when we're on stage. And then we, yeah, we try to not let go of that throughout the whole thing. Sometimes it can be hard, but... Yeah, so at the, at the last show, it was Will. He, he kept taking his bucket hat off, and I would turn around and yell at him and say, if you want to get paid, you're going to put that bucket hat back on. And he would try to slip it off several times during the show, and tensions would rise in the room almost as if I was really going to fire him. And then we would play the next song smiling and let everyone know we were just joking. But it's always something like that where people are guessing, are they being real, are they being serious, or are they messing with us? So once you decided you're doing this in a theatrical sense and you're sculpting the songs, or at least augmenting them a little bit to work in this environment, how did you put the story together? You know, it's one thing to notice themes that are consistent in a couple of different songs. It's another to make a whole story. How did the story of Happy Land develop? We had an original version that ended up changing just be just based on like development of the show, right? So after we had brought the original material in, we were like, hey, there's kind of a hole here. We knew there was a big journey, you know, through this place in between happy land, sad land. We call it the neither, which is neither happy nor sad, right? And there's all kinds of characters and beings in the neither that you would run into that are neither happy nor sad, you know, maybe a little crazy, but maybe not. And so as we developed the journey, I would say. We, we knew there was a journey this character was going on. It started to develop some of the characters a little more clearly. It started to develop some of the places that they went a little more clearly. So we knew our locations, but we didn't know exactly everything that was happening in between those locations. So a lot of those songs either changed slightly that we already had in lyrical composition to accommodate the songs we were writing in between that we didn't have to really fill in those blanks of the storyline. Hannah Cole is an Asheville artist and accountant and the founder of Sunlight Tax. She has all kinds of free resources on her website, including a podcast called Sunlight. Hannah serves up practical advice in short episodes about taxes and shaping how people in creative fields think about business. It is about tax and money issues for, I like to say, visionary creators. So people who are doing care work, healing work, and creative work people who are driven by a passion and not just for money. To me, people doing that creative work are changing the world for the better. They're, we're the empathy muscle of our culture. Sunlight ranks in the upper tier of entrepreneurship podcasts on the iTunes chart. Go to your favorite podcast outlet and find Sunlight with Hannah Cole and go to sunlighttax.com for all the other resources Hannah offers, including details on her money boot camp. Now, m most musical theater, or at least contemporary musical theater, they use dialogue and a narrative between songs to move things along. And the songs are used to either enhance what character is about or set a mood. You're telling the whole story through song. Why did you make that choice? You know, it's almost like an opera in that way. You know, they don't have, there's no speaking parts. So tell me about the challenge 
of both telling story and communicating what you were trying to communicate in these songs originally. That is a really tricky part because especially after we sat down, really we sat down with Jason and Jess and helped, they helped us really kind of flesh out and fine tune our you know rough story. And then we knew there were gonna be some songs we'd have to add for exposition. And it's weird when you're writing those songs like, are we telling the story too hard or are we not telling it enough? Like, are people gonna know what's going on at all? Or are they gonna be like, yes, we get the point. This guy's in Happy Land, he's got a package he's gotta take somewhere. Like, how many times are you gonna say it, you know? And it's, it's hard to tell until you really like are putting it together. And now getting to finally, you know, run both acts and everything, I'm seeing that it's there and like, it's clear and it's, it's, it's nice to, to feel that it's, it's done. How has this experience of working on this show changed or affected the direction of your band, of Smooth Goose? How has this changed the trajectory of what you want from this band or what you think you're going to do? Yeah, I can say that when we first started the band, I had pretty singular ideas about what it was. You know, I wanted to be in a band and I wanted to do band stuff. And we've started to explore other ideas of what a band can be. I think that's one of the big conversations me and Zach had during COVID and all that. We were doing live streams. We were trying to live stream music, you know, eight feet apart in a bedroom from each other. And we were trying to come up with ways as everybody was to, to reach out to people and do something different. And I think at some point, you know, we realized that a band doesn't have to be this model that I think the industry pushes, which is like, you buy merch, you run shows, you tour, you do all this stuff. Like we both work jobs, Zach has a family. Most of the other guys in our band has a family and jumping on the road in a van and going off for weeks at a time isn't realistic. So we're like, how can we, you know, do something in our hometown that's different and that sets us apart as a band where people go, well, Smooth Goose is capable of putting out a number of things, not just a record or going out and playing live shows, but they just did a rock opera and maybe next they'll do Smooth Goose on Ice. You know, we yeah. might, we might yeah. be on a roller rink <laughs> and we certainly don't want to take ourselves too seriously. I would say that, you know, the goal is, I think every band dreams of putting out a big, you know, a big album and I think we have two versions of the album in our head we have like the hit cuts of the album right there's a bunch of songs in the show that are like kind of like hit songs and then some of those songs that connect them are very theatrical so I think our idea is like we want to we have two versions of the record in our head we have a hit version then we have like the theater version that's a double LP right that's got everything on both sides of the vinyl so the big thing with this is to get our name out there and show people what we're capable of doing hopefully get some funding to make that record the right way yeah, I like the smooth goose on ice idea. Smooth goose on ice. I, mean, I really want to go bring this to maybe even a roller skating rink. I would suffice for that if we couldn't get ice. Yes, yeah, really. To roller skate smooth goose on, on wheels. wheels. On right, wheels. exactly. Thanks to Zach Knox and Braden Dickerson for spending time after a late night rehearsal to talk about Happy Land. The Asheville band The Resonant Rogues is allowing me to use their Maker's song as the theme music for The Overlook. Susan and Giles Collard of Asheville Contemporary Dance Theater are allowing me to use the BB Theater to record some of my interviews until my own space is up and running. The Overlook is a product of Podcast Asheville. New episodes are online 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday. Please follow for free on your favorite podcasting app. I'm Matt Pikin, and I'll see you on the next episode of The Overlook.